My name is Ibtisam Sadek, and I'm the data collector on Malta. Um, I'm an academic. I'm uh, working at the University of Malta as a lecturer in the Faculty of Law, and I'm a coordinator of the legal um, clinic that we have running through the master's students who do pro bono um, legal services under the supervision of qualified uh, lawyers. I myself am a practicing lawyer. I work in asylum and immigration mostly. And I'm also currently um, concluding a PhD in anthropology. So I'm very happy to be here because of my field in law and anthropology. Yes, so Malta is the smallest country being represented in the EuroExpert project. Um, most of the most of the respondents were experts, acted as experts themselves, um, and followed by lawyers and judiciaries. So, although the numbers might seem low, it is very much reflective of the small. Um, country, we have a population of just about 500,000 people. So, um, regarding the perception of usefulness of um, cultural expertise, we see mixed answers, which uh, position Malta in the very middle. Um, we do have 34% that reply that it is very useful and 12% that said that is extremely useful, but um, there were also many that replied as moderately useful, slightly useful, or not at all useful, and possibly this is because of the court's perception and the inclusion of, of their reports in the final decisions. Experts can be appointed through the court, or through the parties themselves who request expertise um, directly. However, it is seen as more objective if it is the court that um, appoints the expert, even if this is at the request of one of the parties. The civil code and the criminal code um, both have uh, detailed laws as to the process of appointing an expert, including the oath taking um, in regards to written submissions or oral evidence. Um, we see, however, that 65% said that they had instructed less than 10 experts um, annually. Um, one lawyer who replied to, who responded to the, to the questionnaire said that he himself had acted as an expert before the Scottish Criminal Case Review Commission, and he himself, as a lawyer, had appointed or requested evidence um, from um, various um, anthropologists in asylum, in asylum cases. So in regards to the typology, we see that 44% said that they had appointed or requested um, evidence from native language speakers. This involves um, both um, interpreters and translators. Most, um, but, but we also see country experts, university professors, native lawyers, and smaller numbers of religious leaders, doctors, and community leaders to give evidence on, on their community. Um, in regards to the discipline, we see political science, law, and anthropology as being the most um, fields that experts came from. So in regards to the remuneration, in court judgments, the, at the end, um, the, the court can decide on who will um, pay um, or refund the, the court for the fees uh, paid towards experts. Um, in criminal cases, this is usually uh, the, the guilty party, if there is a, a guilty party. In civil cases, um, the, the, the court will decide whether it should be um, divided between the parties or whether one party should bear all the costs. Um, we see that there is generally a standard hourly rate. In fact, 46% said so. Um, however, it's possible that there is a set price per report, um, that uh, it is on voluntary basis, uh, especially in out-of-court settings or before um, immigration tribunals, and uh, or whether paid in accordance with attendance to hearing. For example, in Malta, the courts pay experts 
35 euro up till a few months ago um, per sitting. Now it has just been increased to 50 euro. Um, but keep in mind that a sitting could be anything between 10 minutes or possibly uh, three hours, six hours. So there's a standard um, rate. So the fields of law, mostly uh, experts are appointed in, in refugee and asylum cases or, or given, giving ed evidence in asylum cases mostly. But we also see family um, cases, immigration and criminal as being the most um, um, commonly um, appointed or requested for, for their evidence. So some types of cases. We see that um, in court cases involving non-multi-speakers, especially in criminal cases, there is the appointment of a cultural mediator who acts also as an interpreter, and they are used for their interpretation and linguistic support to the accused or uh, as well uh, possibly the witnesses, if they do not speak Maltese, which is the language of the courts in Malta, despite that we are both Maltese and English um, speakers, uh, native speakers. Refugee and asylum cases, experts are um, asked to, to, in order to prove the veracity or otherwise of the claims being made by the asylum seeker who's requesting international protection. Um, in administrative cases, we see uh, linguistic expertise being requested on the gender, for example, connotations of a specific names, for example, the addition of an A at the end of the surname to indicate that the individual is a female, um, which is common among certain cultures or, or um, um, countries, or the transliteration of a name um, to make it the necessary rectifications in official uh, identification documents. Well, there are also um, marriage annulment cases. This is when uh, there is a request by one of the parties to declare that the marriage is null, as, it, as if it has never happened. And um, there is a discussion on culture, usually, to show that the interpretation given to marriage by the different parties is different because of their different religion or their different nationality. In criminal cases, we see the discussion on culture um, to prove the cultural embedment of drug use. For example, there are some um, cases on the importation and use of cut, which is common among the Somali um, communities, and heritage and constitutional cases, particularly to prove cultural heritage of a property such as Casini, the local music halls. And I'll end with um, the last um, points. Firstly, that the out-of-court sites of cultural expertise vary. So we have um, NGOs that uh, make use of cultural experts. Uh, out of court, we also have in-detention centers, universities, hospitals, schools, as well as private consultancies. Um, there's also one person that indicated other, and he referred specifically the police. Um, cultural experts can, can I mean, as, as some, for instance, indicated specific communities, like the Su Sudanese community, as providing um, cultural expertise. The training program, we do have one new diploma in education for cultural mediation. It's a part-time evening course that's been offered last year for the first time at the University of Malta. Um, it was a success and I've been told that it will be offered once again. Many of the students participating in this program were, had been for many years cultural experts already in the Maltese courts. So finally, I'll end on this note on the potential model of a cultural ex, um, expertise in, in the multi-system. We see that in, in the International Protection Agency, who has the help of EUAA, um, the European Union Agency of Asylum, because there is a budget from the EU, they hire um, many cultural mediators, experts, and interpreters at the first step when an asylum seeker requests asylum. But then, if the asylum seeker has a rejected decision, the International Protection Appeals Tribunal, which will hear and determine the appeal, does not have the help of any expertise to determine um, if the recommendation was correct by the refugee commissioner. The University of Malta Law Clinic, which I mentioned earlier, which is um, 
what I coordinate is an opportunity for asylum seekers to have free legal service through uh, students supervised by qualified lawyers. And we very much um, use cultural experts. However, we don't have a budget, so we do so pro bono.